in it uh, meditation may all beings be happy and secure may all beings have happy minds whatever living beings there may be without exception weak or strong long large medium short subtle or gross visible or invisible living near or far born or coming to birth may all beings have happy minds let no one deceive another nor despise anyone and you are neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another as a mother who risks her own life to protect her only child even so towards all living beings one should cultivate a boundless heart one should cultivate for all the world a heart to abound as living friendliness above below and no all around unobstructed without hate or resentment whether standing walking or sitting lying down or when awake one should develop this mindfulness this is called divine legaling here not falling into erroneous views but virtuous and endowed with vision removing desire for sensual pleasures one comes never again to birth in the womb <coughs> okay now <coughs> let us begin with our meditation With this uh, metta thought in mind, let us begin our meditation. As usual, we pay total mindful attention to our breathing and become fully aware of our inhaling and exhaling. Notice, you can notice the breath only through the feeling you feel the breath as you breathe in and out you your breath is changing moving in and out and you feel that movement and that feeling also changes as you breathe in and out mentally you perceive the breath through the feelings that perception also changes you pay attention intentional attention that is your volition that also changes every time you breathe in and out consciousness changes what i mention in the, by these names are the five aggregates they are so subtle and so quickly rise and fall along with the breath and we notice them all work together then the body the breath the mind all become very calm relaxed and peaceful at that level your greed or desire for anything does not bother you even the desire becomes calm and does not arise in your mind and then of course you feel even more calm and peaceful without any desire any clinging any craving that makes you even more peaceful that is a state you don't have any rigidity 
uprightness and friction and that time you feel very very friendly feeling friendly feeling is arising only when the mind is very calm relaxed and peaceful and this is a very good situation for us to feel friendliness even though we recited earlier we thought of it now we pass those two stages and come to this uh, feeling level of metta at this level we feel we all breed together we all are one breeding unit in the whole world no discrimination no separation no biases we all are one unconditionally we feel this and there's a wonderful marvelous feeling all happen in your mind of course this situation sometimes is good for sleepiness and drowsiness when everything is calm quiet peaceful no disturbances that time one may feel sleepy we have to overcome the sleepiness by deliberately deliberate deliberately doing something that what i recommend is to take a deep breath hold it as long as you can and then slowly breathe out if you repeat this several times your sleepiness disappears the body become warm and you feel even perspiring and you have sufficient energy to continue your practice and then of course you may feel too much energy that might trigger the mind to go to the past or to the future past is already gone future has not come yet only the present exists and we also recollect the buddha's very wise advice of not to think of the past or ponder over the future as past is no longer here the present uh, future is not long no longer here only the present moment exists the present moment also is not empty moment in this present moment something is happening that is our breathing feelings perceptions thoughts and consciousness rise and fall in the present moment this very moment they all rise and fall rise and fall so the present moment is a busy moment not empty moment not sluggish moment and we pay attention to that then our restlessness and worry has no space no no room for the it to arise of course then it is a very wonderful feeling when the restlessness and worry disappear at that time we still have some uncertainty doubt in our minds as to whether the practice is going to bring tangible meaningful results of course at that time we have to think of the buddha the marvelous being who introduced this system for us to liberate ourselves from samsaric suffering he did that from his own personal experience he was 100% sure that he was totally liberated from suffering greed hatred and delusion 
all hosts of uh, defilements all are gone from his mind he was fully enlightened which he gained by following the dhamma dhamma then therefore became his teacher one who practices dhamma and very diligently engaged in it then we can see how marvelous it is that helps the buddha to be his teacher and that dhamma can be our teacher as well if we respect the dhamma practice dhamma in this way and also the noble sangha who have attained that state the state of liberation following the buddha's advice and his dhamma the dhamma that followed that helped the buddha to attain liberation which is eternal unaffected by time and that dhamma helped his disciples to attain liberation the same dhamma exists today since it is since it is eternal so we can use that dhamma to gain confidence trust in us moreover we already have overcome four or five hindrances greed anger sleepiness and drowsiness restlessness and worry and therefore we have successful in that achievement so we have confidence must have confidence in ourselves that we too can follow the buddha's method and attain the same liberation buddha assured us many times that we too can attain liberation just as he attained with this confidence we continue our practice when we do that we see our mind is full of joy mind is full of joy because there is no resentment no no greed no sleepiness and drowsiness restlessness and worry and doubt once they are out of our way we feel we are out of dead not dead we are not sick we are out of prison we feel we are not slaves and we are out of deserts this kind of feelings we have and that feeling arouses a joy in by degrees when joy arises it is tended by itself through the repetition and then we gain con- uh, happiness happiness makes us even more calm more peaceful more relaxed that leads to concentration when we gain concentration we use the concentrated mind to reflect on the aggregates form feeling perception thought and consciousness as i mentioned earlier and we see them changing very very fast with the concentrated state of mind changes we can see changes more deeply more clearly and sharply so that greed hatred and delusion will slowly fade away from our mind because there is nothing to hold on to they just rise and fall rise and fall rise and fall incessantly with this i like to stop with this instructions and let us continue our practice uh, until i ring the bell at the end
by means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, Friends, let us uh, spend the rest of our time. I want to continue our talk on uh, right understanding. This is uh, going to be the 13th talk on right understanding. Today also I want to focus the mind on uh, our uh, what you call subject of uh, a sixfold basis. So uh, the way we train sixfold basis to deal with our experiences is very important for us to seek or attain liberation. I think last uh, week we mentioned what a real practitioner should do to deal with the exp with these experiences. For instance, when we are in meditation, this, this may be much easier to start with. And then we take this experience to our daily life. But uh, in, in meditation, when an, uh, a kind of object rises in our mind through the eye, this there can arise uh, uh, feeling agreeable or disagreeable and when agreeable arises the meditator notices it he or she is at that time knowing the uh, pleasantness or unpleasantness is then can arouse our desire or reject rejection, greed or anger, accepting or rejecting, then the person feels uh, that person is uh, repelled or humiliated and disgusted with that. Why? Because that is an indication of suffering. By the agreeable that arose, by the disagreeable that arose, and by both agreeable and disagreeable that arose, the person feels humiliated or repelled by that. And that is how one is uh, disciplined oneself in higher training one who has entered upon the path, Dhamma path. The path here 
is the noble eightfold path or right path. We are talking about understanding. When this mental state arises, the meditator can immediately feel, must feel, that this is an sort of a sign of arousing greed and ignorance and hatred. And therefore, that person feel humiliated and try not to stay with that. And uh, then one uh, the noble now is a noble person. This noble one uh, who wants to develop the faculties in a spiritual way, when that person sees a form with the eye, hears a sound with the ear, and smell with the nose and so forth, there arise uh, uh, again uh, agreeable or disagreeable or both agreeable and disagreeable feeling. So, if that person wishes, may I abide perceiving the unrepulsive, in the repulsive, at that time that person will perceive the unrepulsive in the repulsive. Or, if that person wishes, may I abide perceiving the repulsive in unrepulsive, that person will perceive repulsive in unrepulsive. Or, if the person wants to wish, may I abide perceiving the unrepulsive in repulsive, that is what the person feels. If the person feels that uh, in both, uh, let me feel repulsive, or in both may I perceive unrepulsive, that is what the person feels. And then that person wishes neither of them, no repulsive in the unrepulsive, or unrepulsive in the repulsive, or unrepulsive in both, or unrepulsive in both. If then the person does not want to wish that kind of thought in his mind, that person's mind, at that time that person develops equanimity. When equanimity state of mind arises, it is neither agreeable or disagreeable or pleasant or unpleasant. It is impartial, unbiased, equanimous state. Then that equanimity itself is a very, very wonderful mental state. And then the person knows even this equanimity, this equanimous state that it is in the mind, is uh, impermanent. So he thought, he thinks, I is impermanent. What is impermanent is definitely suffering. 
what is suffering is not I, my mind. So through the I, one can experience various feelings and the person mindfully train the mind to bring the mind to a continuous state and then even that is impermanent the I that produces equanimity is impermanent ear, nose, tongue, body and mind which generates various feelings are also impermanent. What is impermanent is definitely unsatisfactory. What is unsatisfactory is without self. Why? Because there is no any entity that can control the experience. It simply happens through all the conditions that we discussed earlier. So the person sees all in internal faculties are impermanent, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind, and whatever comes through this eyes, ears, tongue, body and mind, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind, whatever comes from outside, that also is impermanent. Say, for instance, we see an object, now as soon as we see the object, as I mentioned last time, with all this combination come together, eyes, uh, object, uh, consciousness, contact and the feeling, perception, when all this arise around the object that we perceive, within fraction of a second, that object disappears within our mind. If we keep repeating the memory of that object, it may stay a little longer, but if not, it disappears immediately by itself therefore it is called internally the eyes ears nose tongue body and are impermanent externally those that comes to our eyes ears nose and body are impermanent whatever is impermanent is definitely suffering whatever is suffering is non-self then external thing also that comes to our mind are impermanent and therefore they are unsatisfactory and therefore they are without self. Now we can see the whatever is impermanent is unsatisfactory and then uh, as Internal things are impermanent in three times. Three times means past, present and future. Whatever is internal, internal means our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind. They all were impermanent in the past. They are impermanent now and they will be impermanent in future. All uh, 
therefore this internal as well as external things in the past external things in at the present external things in the future are all impermanent then whatever was impermanent was suffering whatever is impermanent is suffering whatever will be impermanent will be suffering and whatever was impermanent and suffering in the past are without self whatever is impermanent suffering in the present moment are without self whatever will be impermanent unsatisfactory in the future also is without self so in three times past present and future the meditator can very clearly see with very clear insight now this is not some kind of uh, verbalizing or talking to a talking uh, state this is the state where one experiences it pays total attention and be fully aware of what is happening this is the this is the way we we mindfully becoming aware of what is happening i and uh, i let me give another practical example because of our ignorance and craving uh, we generate non existing self at the same time we generate suffering because of our ignorance and craving we we generate self which does not exist but we can create it in our mind we can create so non existing self we create and at the same time non existent as existing suffering we create that means when we create self we create suffering if we do not create self we do not create suffering uh, how do we create self this is very subtle suppose all of a sudden you remember something happening in the world uh, you notice it either through our your eyes ears nose and so forth eyes means reading uh, something uh, in in media papers newspapers books and so on you see something or you hear from talks discussions from somebody one person or several people uh, through these sources eyes and ears i give you one example through these sources you come to know that there is something called unjust unjust or unjust at that moment there arises a notion in your mind that uh, this is intolerable this unjust or unjust whatever it is is intolerable why do you have that thought because 
on the one hand you don't know what happened to make something unjust on the other hand you have a desire to make something just and both of them desire and this not knowing called ignorance makes you as one with uh, self that means i myself know that this is wrong this is unjust and there must be justice and so forth and now at that time what you have created in your mind is desire craving and suffering the moment you created desire in your mind on account of anything that instant you experience suffering because uh, your ignorance you actually don't know how to make things just and correct in the world because the world is external world is made up of so many trillions of things and you don't know all of them to make a conclusion that this is just or unjust you either heard or saw uh, some situation that triggers justice or injustice in your mind and at that time you get you become you feel that you must do something about it and that moment you create your self self identity and with this self you create your suffering so this is how when we do not uh, take care of these things mindfully can make you generate unnecessary suffering within yourself the way to do deal with this according to the buddha teaching is uh, look at the mind and see how uh, limited your understanding and your capacity your strength your time and so forth how much limitations you are you have within these limitations you cannot correct the world but you simply can wish may justice prevail just prevails that's all you can do but you don't know how because if you come up with one solution there may be more problems and when you try to find solution to those problems there will be more and therefore we just have to have to be very mindful to understand our limitations and the multiplicity of things happening outside your domain your strength your 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 capacity your time and so forth and therefore within this limited time and space that you have you cannot uh, deal with unlimited amount of things happening outside yourself so the mindful person must understand this very clearly and uh, uh, then that person simply can wish with metta may peace justice prevail in the world 
but we don't know how but we can uh, look at ourselves when we do not let our uh, desire dominate the mind ignorance dominates the mind uh, we our notion of self will not arise to make the world correct but we can wish you know this is how buddha lived he, he was a 100% perfect example for us while buddha was alive right just near the monastery there was a person who was slaughtering pigs every day that person was torturing the pigs and slaughtering after torturing he slaughtered them and they make such a squealing painful noise that uh, uh, it spread everywhere even buddha heard that buddha did not go to king kosala uh, or some powerful politician and ask him to ask this person to stop it or arrest him and relocate him from somewhere and so forth but he did not do that it was not within he, he, he knew uh, that uh, the world is, this is very good example the world is always like that world is always like that always there are problems but we can not invite those problems into our mind we should not bring them into our mind and we understand the nature of life nature of world nature of karma nature of ignorance nature of desire understand them and then we try to r- remove them from our own minds and that's what the buddha did he completely removed all these uh, notions of i my mind and he maintained supreme equanimity equanimity also has two levels one is uh, my equanimity and the other is just equanimity that's called atam mayata tang maya means that is mine atam maya means that is not mine so the it is a very subtle most uh, powerful mental state so we train our senses according to the buddha staging to maintain this uh, equanimity equanimous state in during our at least our in, med- in during our meditation then the moment we generate self uh, at the same time we generate our suffering and therefore with atammata it is if we say that is not mine that thought is not mine that feeling is not mine that moment the mind remains totally pure and clean and you can temporarily experience nibbana you can experience nibbana uh, as buddha said whenever we see the aggregates this i mentioned only one example aggregates form feeling perception thought and so forth 
they are rising and falling and rising and falling without leaving anything behind. Uh, when we see this very clearly in our mind, that moment, yato yato samasati khandanam udayabhyam, labati piti pamajyam amatam tam vijyanatam. When, the, when we experience rising and falling of aggregates, any fr and every fraction of a moment, and then the mind tries not to hold on to any of them. That non-clinging, non-grasping, liberated mind is very much like Nibbana. Amatang tang vijanatang. Amata means Amata means another another name for Nibbana. Not dies because there is nothing to die, only if there is something that will die. So this is a very uh, a powerful moment in our meditation meditation period or meditating time and therefore friends uh, we try to have this experience in meditation uh, if we understand the Dhamma and in this way we can see how pure the Buddha is in this way we can see the Buddha uh, it is not uh, sort of a body like us he has a body like us but the, the state of Buddhahood is like that so with this I want to end this morning's talk and uh, next week I will start the, another section of the right understanding uh, according to uh, Venerable Sarth Buddha's explanation in uh, Majjhima Nikaya, Sutta number 9. And until then, I want to uh, pause this and tomorrow you can ask me question. So, uh, may all those who are suffering in hospitals from COVID-19 and any other sickness, may they be, may they recover very quickly return to their normal regular life continue their dhamma practice and attain total freedom liberation from samsaric suffering may all those doctors and nurses and hospital staffs who are taking care of these patients even at the risk of their own lives spending their time their energy, their skill uh, to take care of them, may they continue their wonderful compassionate service and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering by following the Dhamma. And all those who are grief stricken or, or, or after passing away their own loved ones, may they be relieved from such grief and continue their Dhamma practice and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering, never to have such kind of grief in samsara. And those who are generously supporting various projects to help the world in various ways, may they continue their compassionate generosity and live long in very good health to continue their wonderful service. And overall, all the leaders who have taken leadership to help the world in many ways, continue their wonderful leadership and live long in good health. And all of you who have been participating constantly, uh, regularly in these Dhamma talks and discussions, encouraging me and giving me more uh, strength, energy to continue this practice, May you all live in very, very good health and continue their Dhamma practice and liberate all of you from 
सांसारिक सफरिंग थैंक यू थैंक यू बंदे